Hello everyone, welcome to Chillopedia, this is Maxim. Today we will work on a beautiful etude. In order to play it well, we will have to take care of the right hand technique, especially string crossings, and to pay all the attention of left hand fingers shape, alternating between flat fingers position and round positions when you use just tip of your fingers. I will play this edit for you in a fast tempo, then we'll study it in a slower tempo with comments about particular kind of techniques you will have to pay attention to, and then I'll play for you the second voice, teacher's part, which will help you to enjoy playing it after you learn all the notes. If you don't have sheet music to use to study this etude, please follow the link in the description for free download of entire Danzauer Klingenberg cello method. <laughs> You can see several Bowen's options printed right below this etude, and we could use the first one to study it in a slower tempo. We'll play two notes per bow, stopping to discuss certain techniques to improve performance. <laughs> First thing to pay attention is bow angle adjustment. You start on the G string and soon you go up to the A string. You should turn your wrist this way and then right away turn it back. This way bow is going back and forth from one position to another. In a faster tempo it's mostly done with adjusting your wrist position. There is not enough time to move your elbow back and forth, or rather up and down. That will slow you down, will make your bow arm tired, and will never work well. A preliminary exercise would be just playing on an open string going from G to D to A string. <laughs> How much to turn the bow, we are not going to measure it. It's enough to say that you have to be listening to the sound quality. When you hear that there are problems with the sound, it gets too squeaky, too thin, too scratchy, that means you have to correct your bow angle. And it's done with practicing. Left hand fingers position. We are usually taught to keep fingers round, so we are using tips of our fingers. And it works for most of the cases, except for the cases like many spots here, when you actually have to bar two strings with the same finger. At the end of the first measure, you have to use the second finger this way, when you go from G to D with the second finger. And right away, you have to move the second finger to the G string. So you can play C and G in the same position. This transition is tricky. You clearly need to play it number of times. I would suggest playing the last group of the first measure and connect it with the second measure. And then later, in the second measure, you have to move the second finger again a little bit towards the A string, so you will cover D and A strings. Mm -hmm. 
And then at the beginning of the third measure, when you move back to the first position, your fingers have to be round again. The same way you can practice the transition from the end of the second measure to the beginning of the third measure. And at the end of the third measure, you have to make sure that your pinky is round. Otherwise, it will be touching the A string and the B with the first finger will never be clear. You see, just a few seconds ago, your fingers were in a flat position and right away they have to be round. And we have the same kind of challenge throughout this etude. I think that in the fourth line, at the end of the second measure, there is another tough spot when you have to switch from the flat first finger position to the round shape of your left hand. Flat, round. Again, I would suggest playing it a number of times. <laughs> And we have to deal with this problem throughout this etude, breaking it down to small parts and figuring out when your fingers are flat and when they are round will take time. But this way you can actually show those beautiful harmonies. And sometimes, like at the beginning of the second line, you can even show a moving melodic voice. That means you can play the first note of each group of four notes a little bit louder. You'll have to make sure that the G string will get a little bit more special active touch. And if you are that creative, you can even slightly lengthen the beginning of each group. <laughs> Then you keep studying this etude with all of those options with bowings and I think when you will try three notes per bow using triplet notes, it will be even more interesting. I'll just show you the first couple of measures done with triplet notes, three notes per bow. <laughs> In order to benefit working on this etude, you don't have to play it very fast. Here is my playthrough in slower tempo, 8th note 60. I'll play with original bowings, 4 notes per bow, and hopefully it will help you to see what's going on here, and perhaps you can even play it together with me.
and when you're ready, you can play in the same slow tempo with my accompaniment. Let's do it. We start together, you hear a few clicks, and we will stay in the tempo 8th note 60. And for those of you who are ready for concert tempo performance, here is my accompaniment in tempo quarter note 80. If you like this etude, you might want to check out all other Tatsao Klingenberg method etudes already recorded. I recorded all previous ones, so you will find 218 different etudes on cello video. And much more. Let's keep playing cello, stay well, and see you again on cello video.